Next victim is the alarm module B8. Nice. So I'm supplying 14 volts to it. It's working and here's the 5 volt. Now it's 5 volt. Oh, just saying down again. Problem 1, 2, 4. Okay. You have to put a lot of pressure right in the middle of the center. center. Push it down. Is that the whole thing? There you go. Minus the rope. Minus, yeah, minus, minus a few from modules. From an outside view standpoint. Okay, other one, number two. Intermediate step. Yeah. And so, how much does it weigh? 70 pounds. 70 pounds, yeah. Okay, so then we open up the top so we can access the. Uh, or the, 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 the back plane. Okay, which means I need to break out the logic analyzer now. Yeah, I mean we'll start with the scope for the first couple. Well, of that's true. Well, we should do, we should use scope it we first. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yell off and I'll pop it right off, okay? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff, yeah. we have a liftoff. 32 Five. minutes past the hour. Liftoff on a the wires. Not bad. 1.37 amps. Okay, we have clock. Yeah, we have a lock on three. Something happening, and the other, the other light stays mainly down. Well, that's good. This is V fail, so that right, means the, the, voltage, the voltage it didn't latch or it has. Oh, sure. It's a one. Oh, that's a one. Oh, okay. It, or it's a one volt. All right. Yeah, so that's a one then. So we have V fails on. Well, this is reading as uh, 5.2 and 15.2, which it actually is a V-fail condition. Which is strange because they behave normally. But we didn't test them with the clock input. Uh, that's true. They were, they were free running. Mm -hmm. So it could be that without these additional modules in, they're not loaded enough. Maybe. No, oh, they were even lighter loaded and they were fine. Right. So. Free running. So they're, they're oh. getting a faster clock in now. I mean, it should all work out with the regulation. Yeah, it should not go out like this. Fourteen point one two. Negligible heating on the wire. Fourteen point one zero. So they are good. Strange looking four volts though. Look at all that. I guess that could be things switching, right? Yeah, it's switching. And no, not just it. the power supply. I mean, that could be gate switching in here. Mm -hmm. So here is start one and go jam. So it seems like we have our first signs of life in, in the computer. We hooked up a second scope and uh, Mike or Carl are telling me they are seeing good stuff. Mm -hmm. What is it we're seeing? So on the bottom line here, we're seeing a parity error, uh, which is exactly what we expect to be seeing because we're running the computer without any memory. Uh, the line above it is the combined alarm gate, so the, this more or less confirms that our alarms are coming from okay. there. Uh, and then the, the blue line here is uh, the go jam. So oh, it's the restart signal. Yeah, it's the restart signal. So every time we get a parity error, we're taking a restart as expected. So that it means it's, it's trying to execute something, mm -hmm. if do memory fetch, right. Right. it gets into an error and correctly restarts. Right. It's because of fatal error. Right. Well, that's good news. 
That's good news. The beast is sort of working. So we believe what we're going to see when we move the probes is it doing the startup instructions, which tries to do a branch to 4000, which is the street restart. Uh-huh. And here it is executing the instructions. Okay. And then getting the parity error. Alright. <laughs> so this is very anticlimactic. You just see little wiggly lines. <laughs> the two lines at the top indicates that it's doing the two instructions. So we think it's working at least the first day. It's trying to bootstrap. Yep. Which is pretty good. Yes. yes. Sorry for the dark videos, fellows, but my film lamp is not as reliable as the AGC. Okay, so 12 is T12. 12 is T12. So this will be all of our clocks and the sync signals, all right? Okay, so you start it and then I run, and then we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay, three, two, one, zero. You have clock? Yeah, you have clock, okay. It is running, run. Stop, yep, all right. Okay, so let's, uh, let's debrief. We have, it's almost good. So One, two, three, four, five. And then we went all good except we missed pulse four. So four is probably connected wrongly. And then it should, re no, happen again. Oops. No, I'm missing oh, some. Oh, you're, you're missing it. This is a capture problem with the. Okay, so maybe it's, maybe 800 is too high. Okay, volts. yeah, so let so me try to change it to 0.5 volts. 500 millivolts, you would say? Yeah. Or uh, do, do 600. 600? Yeah. No, check that some stuff. Done, okay. It's running. Done. It's starting to make sense. Good. 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 Okay, <coughs> that's better. We get all the pulses, and sometimes that's we bad. double count. Mask log. Then I'm going to trigger on both. So this here is done. Okay, oh. uh, trial number three, we might lift off this time. Try again. Okay. Computer coming on? Yep. Looks good. There you go. Right. But it's not too bad for our first trace here that we got right. all the clocking going good. We are an inch away from seeing actually a real instruction being executed. So. Some more progress. We have hooked up the second probe, which now looks at the program counter. Mm -hmm. So we can try to see what it's trying to do. And we were able to catch when it goes out of reset. So let me show that. Uh, that would be waveform. So this is when GoJam is high and it's held in do step 12 basically. So it, it, it tries T12 over and over and over again until it manages to set up the start instruction. Thing. Okay. And then it does it, goes out of reset and goes through two instructions. And now if we look at the full listing. And there where it says Z, Z is the name of the program counter. And you, you see that it goes from the maximum octal value, 17777, etc. to 4001, right. where it's supposed to start. Well, it's supposed to start at 4000, but the program counter is always one ahead of the current instruction. So it's doing exactly what it should do. Yes. So that, that's, that's really super comforting. So it turns out that on the test connector, if you install this little pull-up, uh, this will inhibit all the air conditions and the hope is that it will it still cannot read anything in the program but there should be some involuntary instruction executing uh, due to interrupts and timers that are always running in the machine. So this is yeah. a into a 
software simulation of the agency. Yeah. So it looks like uh, inhibiting the alarms paid off uh, and we now go past the original uh, parity error. I made a little graph, a little chart. So this trace, uh, this is the program counter versus time and you see that it you know, comes out of resets then goes to, that's the the 4000 address and then it has an interesting excursion where it goes to 10,000 so it's doing things uh, so it comes out of reset uh, times a step 2 here and goes to the boot vector, so it's 4001. Uh, but now we don't restart because we ignore the parity alarm. Uh, the ink L line comes on and that's the increment line. During that time we see that the instruction register is getting something. This is an interrupt, uh, 1031. 27 is going to uh, go to the interrupt vector, which is 4004 gets to 4005 and now at 4005 we are back in our non-existent memory so it reads 0000, zero, zero, zero which is interpreted as a jump to zero which it does and we sort of expected it to loop at zero and to our surprise it's reading 731 from location zero And the reason is that location zero, it's register A. And apparently our register A contains all the ones. Um, so this instruction happens to be a masking instruction. So it executes the instructions, goes to two. Now at two, it gets yet another register and it this is a jump instruction, it jumped to 7777 plus 1, which is 10,000 in octo. At that location, we have no memory, it reads 0, so it's a jump to 0, where it goes back. And now, uh, our location 0 has been masked to 0 by the previous instruction, so it's going to read 0 and continue jumping to 0, so it's stuck there. So the thing is, executing everything that we would expect it to execute and I have a little chart here. Pretty well running computer here. Go for it, Carl. So this is something I breadboarded up to try out the functionality for a disky. There are some wires still loose, so some of the segments aren't lighting, but it's... It's diskying with some weird numbers. Well, they're, they're just stuff I put in just to show that the lights are working and test out the segments. Uh, how long did it take you to do that? Like two weeks or something? No, one week. One week. Right, so for one week, I think that's... And I just... Pretty good. Put this all this rat's nest together an hour before I packed it. The computer will continue to display that information until told otherwise. And it's told otherwise by another verb. In this case, the verb is terminate. 34. It's now forgotten that command. Well, can you make it flash like, like you had before? Oh, yeah. So, so it's a, see, verb and noun are flashing. And it would also be flashing opera error or key release if they were going. <laughs>